Welcome to worship this Pentecost Sunday. Please open to 195 in Breaking Bread, Creator Spirit by Whose Aid. 195, Creator Spirit by Whose Aid. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Welcome to our celebration of Pentecost. This is a Jewish feast celebrated 50 days after Passover, a pilgrimage feast where everybody was expected to be in Jerusalem. So the first disciples were there waiting for the anointing of the Spirit. And we too in this season of pandemic await the anointing of the Lord's Spirit. So let's turn to the one who loves us and beg once again for mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church, in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of your Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed. Fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now let us listen to the word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded. And in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt 
and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are great in how manifold are your works, O Lord! The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also in Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Hello, St. Ignatius, and happy Pentecost. Just as a way of introduction, again, my name is Billy Beegler. I'm a Jesuit and a transitional deacon, and I'm here in Boston, but I'm really excited to join you in Portland this summer for my first assignment as a priest. You know, in June of 2016, I drove from Portland, Oregon to my hometown, Sacramento, California, in a Subaru filled with books and a 140 pound rescue dog named Katie. It was the end of my final year of teaching at Jesuit High School. And earlier that month, a friend had asked if I could find Katie a home because her owner could no longer handle her care. So I found my parents. For the majority of that 10 hour ride, Katie sat in the back, anxiously overlooking the mountains and valleys of our journey. And when we finally pulled into my parents' driveway, my fearful and strong-willed companion refused to leave the car. My parents spent almost an hour trying to coax Katie from the Subaru, but to little avail. Finally, as if he spoke dog, my dad said the magic word, you, words, you can do it, Katie, he said. Trust us, it's a new world in store. 
Some of the most distinctive imagery from John's Gospel comes from today's passage. Locked in the upper room and having encountered the risen Lord, the disciples are fearful, worried about life outside their shared home. Like Katie, at the end of that road trip, the apostles' fears are understandable. They had experienced a long and uncertain journey filled with incredible heights and dark valleys. And as the ascension of the Lord meant further loss of a master and a friend, they worried where God might be on the other end of that door. Stuck in their rooms, anxious and afraid, their hopes of spreading Jesus' message were caged in a biblical Subaru. And suddenly, with tongues of fire, the apostles were blessed with capabilities beyond themselves. Through wisdom and understanding, compassion and courage, knowledge and reverence and love of the Lord, they spread the gospel of Jesus. Unlocking the door, they inspired, those inspired by the Spirit reconciled and taught, ministered and healed. Out of the upper room, they modeled forgiveness and strength, self-sacrifice and compassion. In crowded squares, they preached. Across mountains and valleys, they taught. Through once frightened people, love and peace and light and joy entered the earth, bringing to bear God's new world in store. Today, the Church celebrates the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of our foundation, and as much as the resurrection of Christ depended on his crucifixion, so too does the gift of the Spirit depend on those anxious moments in the locked upper room. Because through that room, the Spirit entered, and through those once fearful faithful, God renewed the face of the earth. And it didn't end there. Because on Pentecost, we have faith that God does the same for us today. Yes, today we celebrate because the same Spirit that touched the Twelve 2,000 years ago touches us. In our own upper rooms, God enters our lives. And as the Spirit breaks through our fears and insecurities and anxieties, we are filled with love and wisdom and courage. And so we unlock the door to our upper rooms and we walk into the light. We use gifts unique to us to set this world on fire. We preach the love of God, of Jesus' teaching. We extend the healing and forgiveness of Jesus' ministry. We welcome strangers, embrace the outcasts. We do good to the needy, restore sight to the blind, love the neighbor as the self, and proclaim the goodness that God has in store. It may feel beyond us. We may be tired from these long months of an uncertain journey. And we may feel grief from the pains of loss. We may be fearful of what the future holds or anxious in our depleted resources, but we are Christians and we are blessed with the Spirit. And so we trust that much like our God did not leave those twelve alone and scared, so too will he not leave us locked away. But today, he blesses us with capabilities beyond ourselves. And while some might say, are these not fearful and anxious Galileans with wisdom and understanding, compassion and courage, knowledge and reverence and love, we will walk out of our upper room and into the light. And God will renew the face of the earth. Sisters and brothers, it is God's promise, and this is our mission. And it is as vital today as ever. Our world needs God's love. And you and I are blessed with the Spirit to bring it. So in these more muted moments of quarantine and isolation, 
let us celebrate Pentecost. In our locked upper rooms, let us welcome the Spirit. In ways unique to us, let us be inspired to share God's love. Through patience, generosity, compassion, and self-sacrifice, let us teach and preach and minister and heal in the name of Jesus. And as our lives gently reopen, let us leave that Subaru with courage, trusting in the goodness of this new world in store. Come Holy Spirit. And now let us profess our faith by repeating our baptismal promises. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and rose again on the third day? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are blessed to profess it in Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers to our Father. On this Pentecost, on the birthday of the church, that the Spirit will help us to be prophetic in complex issues such as religious freedom, family life, and care of the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the six Jesuits waiting to be ordained to the priesthood this summer, especially Billy Beegler, for joy in his new mission to St. Ignatius Parish, we pray to the Lord. For parishioners called to leadership in our faith community, especially for members of the Pastoral Council and Finance Council, for the stewardship team and campus care teams, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the discouraged or despairing during the social isolation from COVID-19, that Christ's spirit will be our companion in our darkness and division, our vulnerability and fears. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees, uprooted from their homes and forced to search for safety in foreign lands, that they find compassion and friendship in our faces. We pray to the Lord. For all our sick and suffering, especially for Mike Kelly and Nathan Williams' mother, Alice, and for those who have died, especially Jesuit father, Aldafo Nicholas, formal, former general of the Society of Jesus, and Jesuit father, Dan Kendall, for the victims of Typhoon Anthem in India, and for our own intentions that we hold in the quiet of our hearts.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the household of the church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us in all that is true through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, we sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. When the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. When you do this, remember me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Alexander, our Bishop, Scott, our Provincial, and all who serve your holy people. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray for peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with and let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only Save say the word, word and my soul shall, shall be healed. Of our spiritual communion, soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Never let me be separated from you. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to you, that with your saints, I may praise you forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, you bestow heavenly gifts upon your church. Safeguard the grace you have given us, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon us may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain us abundance of eternal redemption. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> our announcements. I'm very grateful for uh, our deacon, Billy Beegler, for his wonderful homily today. Grateful that he'll be missioned here and start working here at the end of July. Uh, next Sunday is our blood drive. So in addition to your money, we want your blood. So there'll be the blood mobile outside of the church from nine until two next Sunday. Also next Saturday is the walk for water. <clears throat> We join with the two billion people across the earth who are in danger of not having clean water or enough water. So the idea is for you and your friends to walk your neighborhood. It's a 5K walk. What you do is you put as much water as you can carry and carry five for five uh, uh, kilometers. It's about, it's about a half hour walk. So there's also a chance to donate to help people. Uh, and you can go online to find out that, uh, <clears throat> that possibility. Uh, before we go, I'm grateful for Mike and for the Mormon Tabernacle Choir who joined us today in the form of <laughs> the Bird family. Thank you so much for your beautiful work. So let's now uh, uh, receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And please join in singing number 377, The Spirit Sends Us Forth, 377 in Breaking Bread. Amen.